Hello, my name is Heinzel Kunzman. I am the executive director for the uh, Sherman Griffin Project. Um, we have a live audience today. They're a very small audience today, but we're uh, strong in uh, in our character, <laughs> not in numbers. <laughs> uh, but we, we do have an open bar here too. I'll walk around and show you in a little bit. Um, and uh, we have plenty of space. Uh, we're going to start to open up to more people. We were talking about only having 20 people come at a time, but uh, we'll probably uh, expand to 30, 40 people. Uh, when it's not raining, we'll be in the gardens here. And when it's raining, we'll be using a tent like this. Um, and we are streaming this to uh, Alexian Village. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Paige Bailey over there for hooking us up. And uh, hi to everybody over there. I um, will see you tomorrow again when my students play for you through Zoom. And um, also would like to uh, welcome the audience at the VA. Uh, thank you to Sarah LeClaire for uh, connecting us over there as well. And I haven't seen any of you for um, over a year. So uh, I, I miss playing piano for you guys. Uh, hopefully we'll get to do that again sometime in the future. Um, in the meantime, we'll stream this over to you. It's about the same time I used to play piano. Uh, so hopefully this is an acceptable substitute. And uh, lucky for you, you'll have other musicians to listen to besides myself. Um, so, uh, the Sherman Griffin project is a proposed project to take, uh, an abandoned building, um, and renovate it. Um, the, uh, location is 3825 West center street, and we'll take the first floor and, um, convert it into a cafe and it would be run by the Belton family on the second floor. We'll have a music school and, uh, there'll also be a jazz, uh, performance venue component to it as well. Um, the music school and uh, we'll, the music school will be a 501c3 organization, so we will be able to take um, donations and grants. Um, I, this project is um, uh, going to be partnered with the Wisconsin Preservation Fund, and uh, they're going to assist with funding for the project. Uh, we have a variety of methods that we hope to use to acquire funding for the project. We hope to get about $400,000 in grants from the city another $400,000 in grants from found, uh, local foundations. Um, we'll have $100,000 of shares open to investors and another $100,000 we hope to get uh, through crowdfunding. And the crowdfunding goal is um, where your help could be very valuable. Uh, we hope that you could go to our website. I'll put it in the comments section. I forgot to do that. I'll do that in a moment. Um, the web address is thesshermangriffin.org. Uh, please go to the website to learn more about this project. Um, if you think it is a project uh, um, that you're interested in um, contributing to, uh, please uh, think about contributing whatever um, donation you're, you're capable of. Uh, there's a PayPal button on the homepage. Uh, also, our, home, our PayPal is on the ticker at the bottom of the screen there. Um, if you would like to make a donation of greater than $250, I strongly recommend you contact me directly. I'll put my phone number in the comment section. Uh, you can text me. Uh, my home address is everywhere. <laughs> you can, if you don't have it, I can, you can text me and then I'll, I'll give it to you. And then I recommend you mail a check directly to my home. I will then uh, furnish you with a letter of receipt, which would include an EIN number. And you can use the EIN number to write off your donation on your next tax returns. Um, so, uh, uh, in, uh, we originally today, we were uh, hoping to have uh, Devin Dropka perform for us uh, today uh, with his trio. Um, he got called away in an emergency. Uh, so we um, send our sympathy to Devin. Um, uh, it's unfortunate, but, uh, you know, it's just the circumstances. However, we have someone equally as talented, equally classy. Um, you're, you're, we are not going to let you down here. Uh, Maria Tamo, she's described as a triple threat. She is widely recognized as a virtuoso classical flamenco guitarist and flamenco vocalist. Um, her performances uh, last year, um, she was a vocal contestant on Lavos US, uh, NBC, uh, and she um, is a composer and arranger uh, for the production of the Flam uh, Flamenco Nutcracker. Um, and uh, she's also had uh, pieces written for her, <laughs> to, uh, two works for guitar. Um, the two works for guitar were Tango Fantasy and Concierto del Fuego. Um, so I might be, uh, hopefully I'm not uh, mischaracterizing her at all. And uh, I will talk with her in a little bit and you can hear directly from her. But for, for now, let's please welcome uh, Maria Tamo.
here I'll tell you but I'm doing the best I can it's it's fun All right. 
just chat a little bit about a few of the few of the numbers if you guys would like to hear a little bit so um i do flamenco and classical guitar and right now i've just give a little gamut of of some flamenco music it involves a lot of strumming techniques and asymmetrical rhythms different types of rhythms that are not your normal type of of uh i should say that you hear on the radio right just <laughs> so uh basically um you've got 12 count rhythms and uh, you jam on four count rhythms as well. Oh, I had the fingers that held four counts too. Uh, mm -hmm. I was going to ask you. Sure, you can ask. Uh, how long have you been playing? Oh man, I've been playing uh, since. I mean, when did you start? How old were you when you started? I started playing when I was nine, nine years old. That's and uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can tell. You're only what seventeen? So yeah, I'm seventeen years old, right? <laughs> yeah, that, so. That's how you look back. Yeah, well, just was super dedicated and, and as a child just couldn't get enough, you know, when you're a musician, it's in you, man. You're going to yeah, practice all it, the time, right? I don't see it as work. Just right? like you don't see it as you work. Exactly. You don't see it as work. But then as you, you know, as I get older, it, um, I don't need to practice. As, I shouldn't say I don't need to. I don't want to practice as much. But then when the concert comes, I got to get, get down to business can and make it. A, yeah, you can ask. Sure, sure. Please I mean, do. Who your influences? What got you in the flamenco? As you know, because you could have been like Stevie Ray Vaughan and all of that. You know, I'm not saying you not, that. Not no, no, I, you I don't I, know how to do the fingerings and play those music. Right. But I'm just saying, what made you go that way? So um, I wasn't exposed to that. I was exposed to, uh, I probably maybe would have been a, you know, electric guitar player, acoustic, who knows, but that wasn't my exposure. I um, actually, my mom, who as a, uh, I don't have any Spanish background, by the way, no Spanish blood, no whatsoever. Okay. So, uh, but I, um, I, my mom had a, uh, a passion for uh, flamenco actually, but she never was an artist of, of, a, of a musician type of artist. And uh, she, um, it just happened that uh, there was flamenco in our neighborhood, in our suburban area of Akron, Ohio. It was a woman who was. Um, that's where LeBron's from. Yeah, that's right. That's where LeBron James is from. That's right. And so um, she said, Do you want to take a flamenco dance class? And I said, Sure. And then it, this is not really like a common music form, right? This form is something you go to Spain to, and you hang out or people who, who know it. And, and so that was it. I, I took the class. And then, like, I don't know if it was within a year she found a flamenco guitarist meaning just uh you know a, an airline worker who liked flamenco went to spain and fell in love with it took some classes here and there and he came to class i was about you know eight years old seven or eight and i just remembered like, hooked completely hooked right there right it, and there. i think it was And it right. was the dance class and was learning the rhythms and all the all the different improvisations and, or learning how to. Because that they, was attraction. They all, they all have six strings, right? Yeah. But it's the way you play the six strings. And like I said, any Van Haley go don't go. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I th you have such a great point. So I I I, I think that was the draw. It was like I gotta learn. And it was so passionate and you know, just so rhythmic and passionate. And I just just was completely drawn to it. 
And um, I just started doing all of those facets of the singing and the dance and, and so forth. So yeah, I, I, a lot of the, the pieces here um, are, most of them are my compositions or some influences of passed down generations of melodies a little bit and a lot of improv because it's cold. So if it's not working, try something else. So, yeah. You did it. <laughs> but um, yeah, that that's, uh, but all these strumming effects and techniques and, or were just super, super, uh, super draw to me. And um, I think that was the attraction as a young kid. And I really wanted to, wanted to do it. And um, I noticed that no but you're right. I, I, when, when you close your eyes and do this, you start doing different stuff. Oh, I, like, I, I, I probably watching, in the zone. <laughs> yeah, that's the word. You was in the zone and I was like, watch it. Right. You, once you start doing this, I'm like, it's almost like Stevie Wonder. <laughs> oh, how funny. Well, maybe I'll do one more, and I know Heinzel, you wanted to talk with me too, or is it? Scott already took care of that. <laughs> well, there's there's plenty that can be. There's plenty that can you know, we can talk. Sure, I'll, I'll play another piece for you. I'm gonna do a little flamenco singing here for you, just a little taste of that. Um, it is sung in Spanish. Um, it's poetry, and then, um, but it's uh, the words are. Uh, accented in a different way so it fits the rhythm so like my name's maria but it might be you know if my, if my name was in the song Mar maria or Ma, you know it'd be distorted a bit just in order to fit the timing but um i'm going to just play a little bit so you get a taste of what the what the vocals are about it's it's really fascinating to me it these um this art form was created a lot by um, gypsies originally who settled in southern spain and they created this art form that, that represents all kinds of emotions from happy to sadness and so you you know uh what you feel by what the chords are and the rhythm are of the piece so um and then you develop your own style once you learn the, the flamenco character flamenco style you develop your own but i'm going to do a little bit i'm a little improv here and a little alegria
I do. That piece actually goes with the dance, and there's other parts of it, and a big dynamic ending, but I just decided to, to end it there. <laughs> I'll give a little taste of that. Let's do a quick tuning here. something a little more of a stronger they call it a cante hondo nature a deeper song is a little more serious it uh, represents solitude and uh, inner inner strength inner sadness Yes. 
Real quick, uh, for any uh, online audience members, uh, let's see here. Maybe we can, uh, the uh, we're still working on our technical difficulties. Last week we had a glitch with the sound, and I apologize. And uh, we're gonna have a glitch with the battery charger on this camera over here pretty soon. So I set I set up the one over here. So when that one goes out, I'll, I'll <laughs> go over there and I'll unmute the mic over there. Still be going live here, but real quick, and then I wasn't joking. Scott actually asked a lot of questions that uh, uh, you know, I thought were uh, pretty interesting. But um, uh, so uh, I did watch your performance on Lavo. Oh, you did? Am I am I pronouncing it correct? Yeah, Lavo. Yeah, it's like the okay. Spanish version version of the voice. The voice, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it was just amazing uh, because you're, I mean, you're obviously very passionate about um, what you do. And you even learn, you're, you don't have a Hispanic background, no, right? Not. But you learn Spanish and you speak Spanish fluently. <laughs> I, I don't say, I speak it fluently. I can get by, I'm conversational. I can, you know, I understand pretty well, but it's definitely not my native language. But mm -hmm. I've, I've learned along the way. Um, but just, you know, really just a few, cl a few um, classes in high school and in college a semester. But it really was working with Spanish artists, flamenco artists that couldn't speak English that I was forced to to try to speak it so um that's how i kind of got by but singing in spanish no problem okay. you know it's yeah, like, yeah it obviously flows through your blood <laughs> no i mean the it, it's a, actually a funny story if i may um mm, yeah. i when i was first learning all this i didn't really get it or understand and um a spanish so i learned to sing phonetically i didn't even know what i was saying and but i had a good ear and i could you know get it in the right spot with the rhythm and mm -hmm. thongs and the whole thing and then it was like someone asked me once like well what are your words i'm like oh, I don't know <laughs> so i'm like i better learn how to speak you know or learn that the, the length of this better so i know what's yeah, coming so across but, but a lot of times the the verses though they a lot of times they don't make sense in the sense of how we think because it's poetry right mm -hmm. so I'm it's like, I don't know what that means, but I'll sing it with a lot of passion. Right. <laughs> or like, yeah, I got yeah. this part. I got the gist of it, you know? <laughs> well, you do. So. It's amazing. Um, and um, uh, so, and then, uh, I mean, you're, you're, so you started from a very young age. Yeah. Yeah. I started um, dancing when I was six, I was mentioning, and then a guitar, regular guitar lessons at nine. The, um, a, a teacher that, you know, that knew folk guitar, but wasn't professionally trained at all. I was taking lessons once a week. And then. Um, we, I, my family found a, um, a guy that, uh, social worker, again, none of those for, these are professional musicians that I studied with that went to Spain. You studied music with a social worker. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that was his profession, okay. but he's, he's a dear friend and family friend. Um, 
but I'm saying, you know, these people are just that I worked with I are see. people who are just who had a passion or a right, hobby right, or right, right, right. love right. flamenco yeah. and would save their money, go to Spain, take a trip, save it, take a, you know, go to a festival or take a class from somebody and come back. That's what I mean. Like, is that what you did too? Well, no, actually. But anyhow, I I'll tell you that in a minute. And I went with, um, I took from him also. So I would go Saturdays. My dad would drive me to Cleveland, Ohio, and, have, <laughs> and he would show me, you know, some of these techniques and the compass or the rhythm of it. And I would work really hard at it and, and study and then work towards the next opportunity that would come up that we would, my um, parents had an amazing, uh, amazing opportunity they gave me. Um, I did not go to Spain to study. Um, I learned everything from people who, would show me something here and there. And then from recordings, that was my main source. I studied recordings like mad and learned to figure it out and imitate it. And then when I had a chance to take a master class here, or mm -hmm, someone mm -hmm. would come through, but this is a very, um, uh, this art form back in the day. I mean, it's, it's a very private art form and it, and outsiders weren't really invited, right? It was a closed niche I see. kind of, uh, it is a closed niche, but it's become so, well known now people yeah, i mean it's obviously very study. intimate and uh and yeah but it was you had to be invited into the group to be watching flamenco or be a part of that it was I very close knit and so it was really hard back in the 70s and 80s to find anything mm -hmm. at flamenco people had anthologies or something they or pirate a recording or a festival and bring it back so so, so now it's not you like get, today you, like youtube and, right youtube you know, exactly we, can, we have we everything on our fingertips flamenco. but i was like the stop rewind stop rewind on the cassette wow. sure, somebody would get yeah and, uh, but what I was going to say, the opportunity my parents gave me um, was uh, they they saw my passion for it. And of course, my mom and my dad loves music as well. And so they opened up their house every uh, once a year for a, uh, like a July 4th weekend. Mm -hmm. And yeah. people brought people who liked flamenco and uh -huh. would just crash, put tents up. And you would and just entertain them. And <laughs> yeah, well, everyone would chip in and make food for everybody. And there would be food around the That's clock. Here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I'd be up to like three or four in the morning. Show me this, show me that. This person brought, you know, another player who liked flamenco, who maybe went to Spain or studied with somebody and yeah. someone sang or yeah. a dancer. And and so that's what I would look for it every year would mm -hmm. work towards like learning the next thing in order to kind of present it and work with people and jam with people. Wow, that's that's incredible. And there's there's so much carryover to uh, with, with jazz, too, because it's, it's obviously passed from one person to person, not necessarily by like it's written down. Exactly. You got to listen a to a lot of recordings. Um, there's a lot of, um, you know, who you know, like, the, 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 like who's your inspiration. And, and Oh, yeah, it's definitely an oral art form. Mm -hmm. It's learned by ear, not technique books or, mm -hmm. I mean, although there are some now, right? And then mm -hmm. people do transcriptions. But, you know, if you don't know music and you're trying to read the stuff notated with all, uh -huh. <laughs> it's going to yeah. take you a long time. Right, right, right. You know? Sometimes you can just pick it up much quicker by rote. And, yeah, you know, absolutely. Right? Yeah. But you got to develop it here. You have to learn to know what to listen for. And yeah, and, yeah. and uh, what I, I actually have done because I had recordings as my um, as my source or resource mm -hmm. for learning as I, I figured out. I just figured out patterns and and uh, mm -hmm. I have a course where I teach flamenco communication and I teach foreigners how to listen for it. I have a chart system and say these are the. Wait, when you're saying foreigners, you're talking about people who are non-Hispanic. Yeah, right? Okay. right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, gotta, just gotta clarify. Yeah, you're right. I use that term a lot. Yeah, non 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 from Spain, right? right? Because I actually people will go to Spain and stay there and go for three years, come back, go for six months, come back, and you'll you'll probably eventually get it by mm -hmm. that way. But there are a lot of people who can't. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. and they need to be kind of pre-trained to know what to listen for. So I have kind of like a whole comprehensive cerebral way of approaching it to a feeling way so uh, people can understand what to do. And I'll save them a lot of time. I'm like, these are the chords that tend to be played. Or, yeah, you know, right. These so are the direct top three chords. Right. And that, 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 that carries over into so much areas of any genre of music. Basically, once you understand a certain pattern, you can just kind of take that pattern and go with it within whatever genre you're, you're working with. And, um, uh, and it, and it just kind of builds from there. You just build pattern upon pattern upon pattern. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it definitely is. I think the the big thing, um, one of the, uh, I was at a few jazz festivals where I was performing with, I know that's a, a big thing for you. <laughs> and we had this forum and it was a great discussion because I found out that, you know, you'll have like an eight bar phrase or so many, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like that in flamenco. You have, you can extend the phrases. Oh, okay. So it could okay. be a lot longer and the singer can go on for another 30 measures and then <laughs> yeah, exactly and then you wait for that tension to resolve and then you follow but like how do you follow the form i'm like well you're listening for the tones and then but we all have know the basic structure but then it gets broken it gets extended or and that kind of gets changed. you to tune in and pay more attention to yeah to the air. so it's really fascinating yeah. and i've had a huge respect for jazz uh just because <laughs> i don't know how to do it and the, these guys in the 
the jazz guitar world, they just, I'm like, how do you, how do we play the same instrument and have a whole different but, but they're Like um, Evan Christensen, uh, yeah. you, you know, I mean, he, he can do it, right? He, he plays flamenco he plays as well, flamenco right? To, and then, exactly. And as well as jazz and, and a lot of stuff. I, heard I haven't play... heard him play jazz, but I've heard him play okay. some blues stuff, but I, I'm sure he's just very talented and I, and I know he's got it quite a, a realm. Repertoire, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, and so anyway, I better um, sure. I'll let you play with uh, whatever remaining time we have here. Sure. But yeah, thank you very thank much, you so for, much sharing for having your me. Talents. And, Absolutely. And all the best to you on your project. Thank you. Yeah. This is uh, Granado's Spanish Dance Number Five.
so much um so that was incredible that was really a lot of fun i hope all of you at the va uh got to enjoy it and uh, over at election village election village oh we got we got a vet, a vet right here <laughs> we got uh, scott summer he, he served in iraq one right yeah so uh there's a storm <laughs> um but uh, we, we'll be doing these every saturday or most saturdays i should say throughout the summer so if you really enjoyed the music tonight uh Tom Johnson last week, he was so funny. And I'm really sorry about what happened. It was so much fun. We had a blast. We'll have more meetings in the future, too. Um, so uh, we don't have an event next Saturday, which is the, uh, let's see, 22nd? Yep, 22nd. No event uh, that day. But then the 29th, we'll have Latin Jazz. Uh, so uh, you can, it'll be at the same time. They'll all be on Saturdays at 530, um, most Saturdays throughout the summer. So we have three uh events right now Wait, tell him i'm coming up scott summers he'll be he'll be he'll be on june 12th he's here in our audience yeah. right now <laughs> yeah. 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 um so let him jazz the 20th i can actually remember all the, the whole calendar we got uh, uh ann davis on, on june 5th uh scott summers june 12th and then june 19th mark davis he confirmed he wants to he hasn't said like give me information or yet but he said yes he wants to come uh we'll have a double header that day on the 19th uh, he'll be here at 4 from 4 30 to 5 30 and then for 5 30 to 6 30 it'll be aaron aaron crook uh, and then we're already getting our July schedule worked. Um, please go to uh, our website to understand our project more. Uh, and then think about if, if, how you might be able to contribute to this project. It, it's pretty big and it's involving a lot of people. And we need a lot of people to, to get it to, to work. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'll see you on the 29th. The 29th. Cool. All right. Bye, y'all.